Great to YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode around sensors and microcontrollers. In video number 140, we hacked the new IKEA Tratfree smart lightning system using the remote control as a basis. And as I said already in video number 144, it worked, but had some major disadvantages. Today, we will use an IKEA gateway and do it right. We will eliminate the problems of the current hack. We will install and pair the gateway with two different bulbs. We will learn how the system communicates. We will switch the lights using Node-RED. Like that, we can use MQTT or many other tools to switch the lights. If you are interested, we will switch the lights with a normal Linux command. We will install a Python wrapper. You can use this wrapper as a basis for your own programs. We will see the co-op protocol, which was introduced in the last video, in action. At the end, as promised, I will reveal a hot secret about the IKEA bulbs. The major problem with the last hack was that the remote control only toggled the on and off switch. So we were never sure if the bulb was really on or off. This works okay if you switch by hand because you just press the button again if something went wrong. For home automation systems, however, we need a concept with clear commands like off or on. And it would be nice if we could read the actual state back to check if everything went right. IKEA sells a gateway for its lighting system, which promises to be able to do exactly that. You get it together with a smartphone app for around $30. If we have a look at the architecture, we can start with the bulbs. They are connected to a remote control through the ZigBee protocol. In the first IKEA video, I thought it would be a good idea to hack this ZigBee protocol. But the price for a ZigBee adapter is similar to an IKEA gateway. So I decided to buy one of those. I leave a link in the description if you are interested in hacking the ZigBee protocol. The gateway is also connected via ZigBee to the bulbs. And we can connect a smartphone app to the gateway. This app looks nice, but I do not see a big advantage by replacing a remote control with an app. This is not very user-friendly in my eyes. The app communicates via your home network and the co-op protocol with a gateway. So our attack plan is to connect a raspy to the gateway and emulate the commands normally sent by the app. Unfortunately, there is already information around on how to do that. But let's start with building the original IKEA setup. We have to install the gateway and connect it to mains and to our network. Be aware that this has to be done via an Ethernet cable. Now we have to install the app and connect it to the gateway. Here we need the code printed on the back of the gateway. It is the key for the co-op encryption. Next, we have to pair a remote control with a gateway. And as a last step, we have to pair the remote with each bulb. Now everything is working and we can switch the bulbs with our app, either each bulb alone or as a group. Now we have to find the IP address of the gateway. I usually use advanced IP scanner to do that. Fortunately, the MAC address is also printed on the gateway. So we just have to search for it in our IP scanner. Now we should already be able to ping the gateway to check communication. First step done. Next, we have to make our Raspberry capable to use the secure co-ops protocol. You find a few how-tos in the internet I enclose a link in the comments. But fortunately, I found an easier way. We use Node-RED 
and I suggest you run Peter Scargill's script to install Node-RED, Mosquito and many other goodies as a prerequisite. And if you do not know this powerful script, you might consider watching video number 126 first. If you do not know Node-RED, you can also watch this video first. Then you start your browser and navigate to Node-RED. In the palette, you find a contribution called Node-RED Contrib Tradfree. Just install this contribution and you are done. A co-op client is installed together with this contribution, as we will see later. Now we can include our Tradfree gateway into a flow. We find two different nodes. An output node called Tradfree and a function node called TradFreeGet. Let's start with TradFree to switch the lamps. If we double click as usual, we can configure the node. The first time we have to configure also the gateway, here called Hub. We give it a name and enter the security code from the bottom of the gateway. Then we just click on the co-op client Raspbian and the path to our co-op client is entered. Please note this path down for the second part of this video. After the definition of the gateway, we can press this button to auto-discover our bulbs. And really, the gateway announces two bulbs, a clear and an opal one. We can select either one or also the whole group. This is due to the discovery function of co-op we discussed in the last video. Cool. Now we are ready to rumble. We inject a on and a off message to the TradFree node and deploy the flow. And really, if we press on, the bulb switch is on. Really simple. Now we can build a second flow for the second lamp with copy paste. Just replace the bulb in the definition and you are ready to go. In the next step, we want to read the status of the lamps. We use the TradFree GET node and, because we already defined the gateway, it is available here. To read the status, we have to inject a string and we get a message in the debug window. If we have a close look at the message, we see the remote control and our two bulbs and they are numbered from 65536 up. These numbers of the bulbs will be important for the second part of the video. And we see here also the three parameters, on, color and brightness. These are the three parameters we can influence either by our remote control or by the gateway. To do so, we have to inject the right payload into the TradFree node. For the interested viewers, I wrote a small function which reads the input and decides which message to send to the gateway. For example, if the input is warm, a message color warm is sent to the gateway. If the input is half, the message brightness 128 is sent to the bulb. Brightness 255 would be full intensity. You find a link to the file for the flow in the comments. And in video number 128, around minute 16, you can see how simple it is to import this flow into your Node-RED installation. And this flow reads the status of one particular bulb. Based on the status of the bulb, on is either true or false. To finish the Node-RED setup, I use the Big Timer node built by Peter Scargill. This is a very versatile node and I set it up that it will switch the bulb on at dusk and switches it off at dawn. So everything is done. Instead of Big Timer, you can connect your MQTT node to your flow if you want to switch the bulbs with MQTT messages or with Twitter or with an email. Nearly no limits. Viewers who want to stick with Node-RED can now finish. If you want to program yourself or look a little under the hood, you can continue this video. 
we will now move to the co-op client and also to a Python example program. To do that, we have to navigate to the directory of the co-op client we noted down in the step before. Then we can execute a simple call. This command calls the co-op client with the user client identity and the password from the back of the gateway. The address of my gateway is 192.168.0.15 and the port is now 5684 because we use co-op S, the secure protocol. And 15001 is the number for the gateway. In the response, we find the three devices from before numbered 65536, 37 and 38. If we add 65537 to the command, we get the information about one particular bulb. Here, the properties only have numbers. You find the details of these numbers in my blog post. If we issue the pot command with some additional parameters, the bulb switches on or off. If you want to use this client in a Python program, you can install a so-called Python wrapper. It consists of a few Python programs and it is installed in your home directory. If you navigate into its directory, you can use it with simple commands like tradfreestatus.py to discover the bulbs or tradfreelights.py to switch the lamps. That's it for today. Summarized, the new hack can definitely switch the lamps on or off, warm or cool, and not as the old hack, only toggle through the states. We paired the new gateway with two different bulbs. We know now how the system communicates and also its parameters. We installed the Node-RED contribution for TradFree and developed flows to switch the lights and read their status. Based on these flows, you can easily connect your TradFree system to MQTT or any other service. We switched the lights with a normal Linux command using the co-op client. We installed the Python wrapper and used it to discover and control our bulbs. And of course, all was based on our new discovery, the co-op or its secure sister, the co-op S protocol. By the way, the remote control still works in parallel with the gateway. Did I forget something? Oh, yes. The hot secret. Here it is. The ambient temperature is around 28 degrees. And if we go now to one LED, the power supply has more than 90 degrees centigrade and the LEDs have about 50 degrees centigrade. Now, if we go to the other bulb, same thing here, nearly 90 degrees centigrade, the power supply and the LEDs also about 57 degrees. So the power, power supplies are really a problem with these bulbs. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, then like. Bye.